I'm using a hand, I am driving right now, but I'm using a hands-free device. I'm not touching the phone. I'm not looking at the phone. So everything's gravy with the safety. But I wanted to tell a story or something that happened to me before I forget. Um, I wrote some stuff, some points down. I probably won't remember it all, but um, preaching the gospel is so important. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. I want my worst enemy to get saved. I want the, the worst person you can think of to get saved. Why? I'm, a, I'm the worst person you could think of. This is 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 15. This is a trustworthy saying that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of which I am the worst. I want everyone to come to salvation. And God will make them new. And will erase their sins and and make them a new creation in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But I've been real discouraged lately, and it's my fault, you know. I've been a lot of compromise, but it's affected my witness. I always think of um, Romans 2, 24. The name of God is blasphemed amongst the Gentiles or amongst the unbelievers because of you. I mean, it, and, and when I think of this verse, I, I apply it to my own life to say, if I'm not living holy and I'm preaching the gospel, people are going to, and I'm talking about Christ, unbelievers are going to blaspheme God because they're going to look at me like a phony, a hypocrite. Not to say any of us are perfect because none of us are perfect except for the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But yeah, I don't want to get too off track. Recently, if you guys saw one of my videos, I printed gospel tracks. So every once in a while, like, I try to preach the gospel. I ask the Lord for opportunities, but like I said, I've been discouraged lately. I haven't been preaching much. But I also had them gospel tracks, so I've been handing out a lot of tracks instead of having them one-on-one -on -one interactions with people, which is kind of lazy, self-admittedly. You know, it's good sometimes. You can't have a conversation with every person you meet, but also I was neglecting a couple conversations by just, oh, here, you know, the job's done. Also, I, th I think a lot of people tend to think of preaching the gospel as a chore. But it's really a privilege. It is so beautiful. And I was talking to one of my friends from church about how discouraged I was and how important preaching the gospel was. And there is a real heaven, a real hell. You will spend eternity in one of those places and there's only one way to heaven. And it's a free gift that you accept by faith for what Jesus did for you. We all owe, owe a debt for our sins. Every sin will be judged. Jesus took our penalty. But I don't want to get too off track. I'm already rambling. But tell me why I was feeling discouraged. And bro, that day I said that to my mans. I literally preached the gospel to anywhere between four to six people. Every single one of them was a stranger at my job. I've never met a day in my life. And it's just beautiful. And, and, and he gave me opportunities. He gave me encouragement. He gave me boldness. He gave me the drive. He gave me the words to speak. And that's like four to six strangers. Plus, I saw a couple people like were intently listening who weren't in the conversation but were just nearby. And um, it was just beautiful. I'll tell you about one dude though. It was a strange interaction. The, the first dude I preached the gospel to, this is yesterday. Um, I was going to hand him a gospel track. But God, put it, I, feel, I feel like the Holy Spirit was pushing me, yo, preach the gospel to this dude. You feel me? So I, I told him straight up, like, yo, I used to be in the streets. Uh, uh, uh. And then he, he interrupted me. He was like, yo, what, you need a job or something? I was like, nah, I'm just telling you that to let you know Jesus Christ really saved me. He made me new. He performed miracles. You know what I mean? And then I proceeded to, um, to, um, try to preach him the gospel. And, and I told him, I start off with, you gotta tell him why they need a savior. Tell him about sin and the, and the penalty for sin. And he interrupts me and he says, yo, you know Stephen Furtick? 
and I kind of give him the side eye, you know what I mean? I don't know if you guys know who Steven, Steven Furtick is, but um, I'm not going to get too much into it, but I would definitely 100% consider him a false teacher. He teaches... E check reported ahead on I-91 North. He teaches the heresy, the little God's doctrine. He has called himself God Almighty before, um, which is very blasphemous. Even if you do believe in the little God's doctrine, which is obviously unbiblical and heretical, um, you calling yourself God Almighty, you're putting yourself in the place of the one true God. Regardless, he's also, he misuses and misapplies and eisegetes scripture on a consistent basis. He's more of a motivational speaker than anything, but I didn't say anything. I didn't like, because I'm not... I'm not about to, you know, start bashing people. What it's not bashing; it's the truth. But I just didn't feel it was appropriate at that time to. Oh, he's the false teacher. Ah, uh, uh. but um. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I try to keep preaching the gospel to him. He interrupts me again. I run with him. He said he says he runs with Stephen Furtick. I don't know what that means. I don't know if he met. We know friends of friends. Or I don't know what, or, or if it means he's part of his ministry team. Who knows? He could be Stephen Furtick's best friend. He could have seen him one time. I don't know. But he said he runs with him, whatever that means. And I was like, yo, bro, do you know the gospel? He says, nah, I'm a multi-religious man. You know, I, I do Ramadan. Uh, uh. And I was about to start breaking down the Quran with him. But you could tell he wasn't even really into, um, Islam either. He's just the everywhere type of guy, you know, this, this, and that, a little bit of this. And I was like, yo, bro, just let me, let me finish telling you like how to get saved. Forget religion for a second. Just how does someone get saved? Because, bro, you know you're a sinner, bro, and God is just, bro, you will judge them sins. How, how do you get to heaven? It's not by good works. And I'm trying to preach him the gospel. He keeps interrupting. He's like backtracking out the door. He keeps bringing up random stuff. He seemed like a cool dude, but he didn't want to hear it. So I was like, yo, bro, here. I gave him one of the gospel tracks. I'm like, yo, bro, please read that when you get a chance, bro. If you ever see me, holla at me. Um, ask me questions. If you got questions, bro, I'll be praying for you. But I just thought that was a, a, a story time worthy interaction, you know. And I just thought it was beautiful, too, how, how I was preaching the gospel to some dude. There was, everyone was a stranger except for one dude who's, who's a regular at my job. I never preached the gospel to him before, but he comes in. I don't really know him. He's an older dude. But while I'm preaching the gospel to him, at the perfect moment, a lady walks in, and, and she's waiting. This has happened before, and the customers usually look mad and patient. They be mad, you know, but it is what it is. But this, this woman wasn't at all. She was intently listening, and... Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know if any of these people accepted Christ. They didn't make... I mean, that's not my job, you know. He who reaps is nothing. I mean, he who sows is nothing. He who, he who, um, he who reaps is nothing. He who waters is nothing. But God who gives the increase. It's not our job to... To if, if to make someone accept or reject, we can't do that. All we have to do is make sure we preach the gospel clearly to them. Because if not, their blood will be on our hands. But it, it's just so, so beautiful. No, no words spoken for God will be in vain. And it's not me. I've done a lot of things. I, love is action. You know, I've been, by sinning, I'm being unloving toward God. And, and I just had a thought pop in my head. Like, yo, I'm not, when, when I'm in my worst sin, you know what I mean? I'm not any more, I mean, any less deserving of salvation as I would be if I was living in as much holiness as I as I possibly could and and what do I mean by that I mean um that say say I gave all my money to charity say I um worship God all day every day say I try my best to keep all his commands if I did that I wouldn't be any more deserving of salvation than Hitler why? Why do I say that? Because none of us deserve salvation. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, and um, there are some sins that are worse than others. Don't get me wrong. Um, that's definitely the case. But 
the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. We're not we're not better than anyone, you know what I mean? And um, sometimes I like this analogy. I, don't, I try not to use too many analogies unless I'm trying to explain theology, but I don't get theology from analogies. But I'm I'm not better than anyone else. I'm I'm just a beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. And I tell people all the time, they say they believe when I, they believe in Jesus. They believe he, he gave his life on the cross. They believe he rose from the dead. But but they're not saved. And it's it's I tell them it's, it's free. And I keep going off on rants, but it's just, I don't know. It is free except the gift. You don't have to be. Not only do you not have to be a good person, you couldn't be a good person if you tried. <laughs> 